So now let's talk about exports. I've made reference to them multiple times. There has to be this pairing between this binary says I want to import those functions and this other binary says I am exporting these functions for you to import. So export uh, is basically, as I just said, it's going to be the export table just at a high level before I get into the pictures. You can think of an export table. We've said that there's lots of RBAs all over the place within the binary format, right? The export table, you can think of it as just a big list that maps an RVA to a particular string. So if this is your libc library and it says, here's the string printf, and here's the RVA within my cell, so it's relative to my own module, where you can find printf. So if you want to find the absolute virtual address of printf, first you find the base address of the libc module in memory, and then you go look up in this table, printf has this RVA, and so you take the base address plus that RVA to get the absolute address of printf, and you go fill it into your own import address table. That's behind the scenes what the OS loader is doing to fill in an import address table. It uses those hints, for instance, to say, oh, printf, maybe that's index you know, one, two, three in the export table. And it tries and it says, is that printf? And it looks at its import names table and says, I'm looking for printf. Is index one, two, three printf? If yes, you just take base plus that RVA, fill it into the import address table. So that's a high level. You can just think of it like, names and RVAs. Now, the reality is that the data structure will be a little more complicated than that. All right, so how do we get to the export address table? We do that through the data directory as normal, and the zeroth entry in the data directory is the export, uh, is the pointer to the export address table. So from there, we point over to these data structures. So now, we're talking about a particular module exporting a bunch of functions. So there's not going to be many of this export directory structure. There's only going to be one of that structure right there. But that structure is going to be pointing to three lists. And the three lists, one of the lists is basically those RVAs that I was telling you about. One of those lists is uh, basically pointers to strings. Right? So here's the pointers to strings. Here's the list of RVAs. So these are the first two things that I notionally said First list is like, here's the RVA. Second list is here's the string. And then there's this other thing called ordinals. And that kind of, you can think of that having to do with those hints. It, it kind of has to do with like a particular function is at a particular index in these other tables. But um, basically it's because thus far we've been looking at imports that import by name. So they say, I want printf. You give a string and that's the function which you want to import. It turns out there's a second way to import things that we haven't seen at all. It's called import by ordinal, where instead of saying, I want printf, you say, I want function 39 in DLL foo. Right? So instead of saying a string, you say, just I want a number in a DLL. And that's called importing by ordinal. <clears throat> the benefit of importing by ordinal is kind of optimization because there's no string searching that has to go on in the background. It's like, if this DLL isn't changing, you know, and this DLL hasn't changed in 10 years, you can just say, I know that printf is index 123 in the libc library. So I can just ask for index 123. I don't need to take this extra time to go search string tables, search hints, and things like that. So that's the second way. It's basically, again, just sort of a speed optimization mechanism. If you want to go directly to a function and you're really confident that you know the index of that function, you can import specifically by the index or by ordinal. Index and ordinal basically means the same thing. All right, so <clears throat> again, starting from the single structure that points at three lists. Stuff we care about, first of all, time date stamp, right? So before, when we saw bound imports, we said there's a time date stamp that specifies which binary this corresponds to. And I said, you know, I'd like to tell you that that's the time date stamp that you learned about in the file header, but in reality, it's the time date stamp in the export information. So when you're doing binding and you're pre-filling in the import address table, you're taking the time date stamp from here in this data structure, the exports data structure, taking that time date stamp and you're filling it into that bound import information, saying this is the version of this particular DLL which I used when I filled in your import address table. All right? And so just like the other time date stamp, though, unlike the one that was either zero or negative one, this is a real time date stamp. This is second sense epoch. And so this is the sort of second place that a person trying to do sort of malware forensics and tracking of when people have compiled stuff. 
this is the second place they might look. So the interesting thing here is, right, that first time date stamp we saw, that gets set every time you compile the thing, right? This time date stamp should basically be only changing any time that the export's information is changing in some way. So it's like if the RVA to function one is still you know, hex 1000, and you just recompile the thing, and nothing about the RVA changed, and nothing about the name changed, then this time date stamp can stay the same. And so this should basically only change when there's been a meaningful change to the export, saying it's at a new offset. These function, at least one function is at least one byte different than it used to be. Because you basically want to keep the exports information, the, if the exports information is the same, then you don't need to go change any of that bound import stuff, right? You can keep recompiling a file, and maybe you're just playing with strings and you're just, you know, editing strings and stuff like that. The function information all stays the same. If the function information stays all the same, you want to keep this time the same so that anybody that bound against it knows that this function information is still the same. So this should only really change when the function information changes. The first one up in the file header, that changes every time you recompile the thing. This one should be more static. And in that sense, whereas the <clears throat> first file header uh, time date stamp can kind of say like, oh, well, you know, Bob compiled this thing, you know, last Tuesday. This thing could say, oh, but really, it turns out the last time any of this function information changed was last year. So maybe Bob made this file last year, and then he's just been changing it since then, but nothing about the functions is changing. So this kind of gives you a farther back date, potentially, for the original creation time of this particular binary. And when I was saying before about Kaspersky articles about uh, of the Stuxnet crew changing the time date stamp on that file header. Um, they weren't trying to do any manipulation of the, the time date stamp at this level, right? So they were like messing with the file header one to make it look like it was in 1990 or something like that, some un unreasonable value, but they were not manipulating this, so you could still say, okay, it was 2009, something like that. So this is the second of three time date stamps that we'll kind of talk about for that sort of malware uh, attribution and intelligence gathering kind of thing. So that's pretty simple. It just relates to did anything about the exports information currently change. If it does, update that time date stamp. All right. <clears throat> yeah, so these are my updated slides. So number of functions and number of names will differ when you're doing this import by ordinal, right? So the number of names, first of all, is just we said there's, there's tables. Let's say here's the RVAs and here's the names, right? Typically, if you're in, a typical binary is going to have the exact same number of functions as number of names because it's exporting all of its functions by name. But if it allows for importing by ordinal, then you can actually have more functions than you have names. So there will be some function where you can't call this function by name. You have to call it by ordinal. And that's when you'll have more functions than you have names. Um, yes. Yeah, you, you mentioned about doing a binary search. Yes. That implies then that the names are stored alphabetically. Yes, actually, very, very good, very good inference. I'll, I'll show that in a picture in like right about here. So we'll see that actually the the names are stored alphabetically to allow for binary searching over these names. All right. So base is another field in the export information. And base is sort of weird. I'm not really sure why they have this capability, but it's there and we have to account for it. Base is basically saying when you're exporting things by ordinal, you can start at some value greater than one. So you, it doesn't have to be like import ordinal 1, 2, 3, 4. You can say import ordinal 501, 502, 503. And therefore you're saying anyone who wants to import these functions from me, they better know that they need to ask for 500. To some degree, I think part of the point of this might be to break backwards compatibility. Like if you want to make it so that stuff is no longer compatible, people used to be importing function one, two, three, and now you say set the base to 10. Now they need to import function you know, 10, 11, 12, or 11, 12, 13. This, I think, could be used to actually explicitly break backwards compatibility so that they need to update their code in order to call your functions. But I'm not entirely sure whether that's the original intention. But all you have to know for base is basically it's the starting index that will be used into this ordinal table. And I'll show a picture basically in a little bit. Well, no, I'll show a picture. 
All right, so when we're, we're dealing with base, we've got this export address table. This is the actual table of RVAs. This is the thing saying, this is the RVA for index 0, index 1, index 2, and so forth. And so we don't, without knowing anything else, we don't know which functions these actually correspond to. We don't know which names they correspond to. They may not correspond to any names because the import address table can have more things than the import names table. So import address tables could have five things. Import names table could have zero things. if They're all exported by ordinal. And so when we have a base of one, what it's basically telling you is that if someone imports ordinal one, you need to subtract off one, and then you'll get to index zero in this particular table. So it's basically just a thing where they ask for ordinal foo, and you subtract out the base to get the correct index in this table of RPAs. So correspondingly, if you decided to break backwards compatibility, you changed the base. You said, from now on, all of my exported by ordinal things are starting at 37. If someone wants to import 37, then the uh, loader will basically say, OK, you're trying to import 37. I'm going to look at the base field. I'm going to subtract off 37, and I'll go to index now 0 in the export address table. So base is just used as a subtractor to get a particular index in the import address table. Question? No? No question? Okay. <clears throat> all right. So that's all the point of base. And going back, then we have the actual three pointers to those arrays. So address of functions. <clears throat> We're going to be calling address of functions the thing which points at the export address table. So EAT means export address table, and that is given by the field address of functions. Address of names, this is going to point at the names table. So again, just back to the notional, there's a map of functions, RVAs, and names. So the address of functions is the RVAs. Address of names is the names. And you can think of it like export address table, EAT, export names table, ENT. It's just the equivalent of back in imports, we had import names table, import address table. Here we have export address table, export names table. And then finally, name of ordinals. And this has to do with the fact that we're doing this alphabetic, we're doing an alpha, I don't know what that, alphabetical, lexical ordering of those strings. Um, and so the export names table is basically going to be a thing which allows us to map from the strings table potentially into a different index in the export address table. And I'll show that with a picture in here in a second. Yeah. Okay. So I think this is my only picture. So this is kind of taken from the Matt PyTrek articles and remade a little bit. So <laughs> let's get pointy. Bill, can you follow me to the, the uh, screen? So we've got a single one of these data structures for all of your exporting information. And then we've got primarily three tables, and then we've got a string table off to the side, kind of like we had for, for imports. So we've got the EAT that's pointed to by address of functions. We've got the ENT that's pointed by address of names. And then we've got this name ordinals table, which I'm going to claim is sort of a translation table between the export names table and the export address table. So first of all, let's say that we're looking for a particular function to uh, import by name. So we don't have like import by ordinal. We can't just skip directly to the RVA. We're importing by name. So we're going to say we're going to import edit owner information, edit owner info. So the OS loader is trying to find the RVA for edit owner info. How it does this is it goes to the, it, it has edit owner info off to the side in its own local variable. And it's going to go to this table. And it's going to do a binary search. So this table is six big. We're going to assume that a binary searches to you know, the middle and that entry right there. So it goes to the middle and it goes to this entry. This entry has an RVA of a string. And it goes and it looks up that string. That string is edit permission info. And it says edit owner info, edit permission info. Is this you know, less than or greater than, uh, less than, greater than, or equal to, right? It says 
edit owner info because it's E-D-I-T-O versus E-D-I-T-P. Okay, O is less than P. So I know that, okay, I've done my binary search. It's not on that half of the array. It's got to be back on this half of the array. So then they, you know, go back to, you know, half. Well, half is here, and we're going to say they round down. And then they say, okay, this entry right here. They say this entry has an RBA. That points at edit audit info. Right, and so E-D-I-T-A versus E-D-I-T-O, A is less than O, so I know it's not on this part of the table, and now you know, I go halfway and the only thing left is this right here, and I found edit owner info, edit owner info, okay, that right there is what I care about. Now, it's not so simple as just, all right, go index 0, 1, 2, and go 0, 1, 2 up to here. We have this name ordinals table, which is basically the translation because these things can actually be in different order. So we go 0, 1, 2 into this array. So we got index 2 is the function that we care about, edit owner info. And then we go 0, 1, 2 into this array. And this now is going to be an ordinal that we're pulling out. Well, it's not even an ordinal. It's just an index up into this table. So we go 0, 1, 2 into this. We pull out this index, and it's 1. I go 0, 1, and now this is going to be the RVA for edit owner info. Right? And so this is the sort of process that it goes through when it looks up by name. So obviously you can see that you know, import by ordinal is faster. Right? You just go right there. The bigger the binary search, you know, it's still log in, but it's still a big search. Right? So import by ordinal, you just go straight to what you want. But this can you know, change around. So when you fall back to import by name, you do a binary search. You find this, then you get this translation table, and that tells you where you actually go in this. I believe originally this was not uh, alphabetically sorted. So I think that was part of the reason why we had this in the first place. When this was not alphabetically sorted, you needed to basically, you know, you'd, you'd do linear search throughout this, and then, you know, you'd find a particular entry, and then you'd find it up here, and then you'd find it up there. So I believe that's the reason for this, because when they were originally like circa 90, win, Windows 95 or something like that, they weren't sorting this. And so you just kind of had to search through that, find that, and go up to that. But that's why I believe that extra layer of interaction in there is in there. But I'm not 100% certain on that. That's just some historical stuff I've seen when looking into it. All right, any questions on this looking up? Basically, the, tra the process by which you import by name, you find something, and how you ultimately find the RVA associated with the name. Anybody have any questions on that? All right. So, moving on. Okay, and then just the last thing again. Number of functions is the size of this array right here. Number of names is the size of this array right there. And this need not be as big as the translation. All right. So just as a miscellaneous thing, you know, there's the question of if you're writing code, how do you actually export a function? How do you, gen how do you make the compiler generate all of that data structure for you? Well, the simplest way and the way that was used to make your DLLs that you're using in the templates is that you just have this decl spec export at the beginning of the uh, of a function. You throw this decl spec DLL export at the beginning of the function, and then the compiler just does the right thing and just makes something where there's going to be an import names table that has a reference to a string, say hello, for instance. All right, the other way you can do it is that there's a module definition file or a .def file. And the .def file is basically the more, I believe it's the more common way if you want to do actual um, export by ordinal. It's basically a .def file can just be a big, like, here's my function, and here's what I want it to be exported as. And like, here's my function, and I want to call that ordinal you know, 5, and 6, and then 7. So typically, export by ordinal, you'll make this .def file, and it's just a big list of here's the functions I want to export. 